Hey guys, another Not Part of Your Scene Comics Chaos review. Today we're going to do Oberon number four. Before we get into that, remember you can find me on Twitter at Chris Sarda, on Instagram at Not Part of Your Scene, notpartofyourscene.com. So Oberon's one of the Aftershock comics that, you know, I, I pick up a lot of Aftershock. And uh, this is one I, I've definitely stuck with and, and liked. It's very different, but then hits a lot of, a lot of notes you know, that are still tropes, but are, but are okay. So it's a, it's a fantasy comic, but it doesn't have the, it doesn't have the feel of, you know, Lord of the Rings or something like that. It, uh, it borrows from Shakespeare, Queen Titania's in here. Um, the, uh, that's not Puck, they call him Bottom. I don't remember if that was his name in Midsummer Night's Dream, but at the same time, it's nothing not like Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, this young girl here seems to be some kind of Harry Potter girl that might have some kind of power. Uh, what's interesting about it is that the focus is on uh, Oberon, who at this point, still four issues in, is pretty pretty much a villain. Only only cares about getting his crown back from his his ex-wife, Queen Titania. And that gives it a, a real nice little shakeup. Because other than that, I would say that it, it feels a, a lot like a Neil Gaiman sort of story, um, but focusing on the the bad guy, uh, the person that is the leader. So Neil Gaiman normally you you know one of his standard um, one of Neil Gaiman's standard tropes, I guess it's style, is that there's some guy that doesn't know what's going on, and there's some weird guy that's the leader and sort of leads them through this world. Whether that was Neverwhere, whether that was uh, like Anasazi Boys, all of that stuff. I mean, Mr. Wednesday in, in American Gods, a show I have to watch. So it feels like that, except Oberon is definitely the main character in it, the protagonist, when typically this is like sort of the Harry Potter character that doesn't know she's powerful or has some kind of power. Uh, so that's kept me interested in it. I, I should let you know who did this. Ryan Parrott is the writer and creator. Uh, Milos uh, Slavkovic is the artist. And then Leonardo... Uh, Petcherati is the colorist. So, um, and other than that, I think that the art style really matches it. It's sort of like, it does really have like a, you know, sort of a darker Disney feel. Like if Disney did uh, much darker stuff, uh, very, has that like sort of animation cell feel to it. Um, so I like it and I've kept up with it. And like I said, what, what I'll continue to do when I talk about this is, is, uh, Ryan Parrott's decision to make Oberon, who is definitely the bad guy at this point, uh, the main character or the, the main protagonist. And then we'll see if he changes. We'll see if that takes a long time. We'll see if they keep him as more or less evil throughout, you know. But he's playing with this little girl's heartstrings, sort of, and just knows that his, uh, his wife wants her for some reason. And all he seems to care about is getting his crown back. So... Uh, very good, very fun, very fantastic in the, that fantasy sense. And a good twist because, um, you know, aside from Kill Shakespeare, Shakespeare's like one of the, the most important writers or the most important writer really in the English language. And we we really don't play with his worlds. I mean, his worlds are actually extremely uh, rich and interesting. And it's not because it's not because they're perfect and no one needs to touch him. I mean... Tolkien's been copied nonstop, uh, you know, as, C as has C.S. Lewis and a bunch of other people. So uh, I really enjoy it, and I like the uh, the structure and the plotting of the story and the decision to make over on that main character. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And uh, I'll be surprised if you're even reading Oberon. I hope you are, though. Thanks for watching.